All right, it's 602, so we'll start this conversation. So welcome everybody to Together We Mentor Health Career Connection um, Support Webinar 2021. So my name is Joanna Gonzalez. I'm the VP of Mentorship with uh, SoCal Regional Board with Mi Mentor. And today we have a line of amazing panelists and speakers who have our HCC alums who took part of this internship ex experience and will definitely share out their experience as interns and where they are today. So before we actually dive into the whole application, the process, any questions that you may have, let me introduce a little bit about Mi Mentor. All right, so if this is your first time joining uh, Together We Mentor, uh, we do host different webinars uh, related to medicine, pharmacy, so definitely different careers in healthcare. And just to tell you a little bit about our mission as Mi Mentor, um, our mission is to develop and support innovative mentorship opportunities that will inspire the next generation of diverse healthcare leaders for underserved communities. And our vision is a world where all aspiring and current health professionals have a mentor. So how can that look like? Like I said, we host different Together We Mentor webinars, but we also host different uh, conferences. A recent one that we ended up doing is actually uh, Together We Lead uh, Women in Medicine, and that was uh, back in August. And an upcoming, um, event that we have is Together We Lead next month, uh, Black Lives Matter. So we'll have a different but a diverse uh, physicians talking about their experience and really uh, voicing that social justice uh, perspective. So those, that's some examples of how uh, we take part in really inspiring um, young professionals or wherever you are in your journey in healthcare. So with that shared, I'll be passing this over to Pat, who will go over Health Career Connection, their mission, and really what they stand for. Hi, thank you. And it's wonderful that everybody from Mi Mentor, I know many um, Health Pathway Program um, alumni are on this Zoom. And um, with the team around that you see, this is the face of Health Career Connection. Um, Health Career Connection is a 30-year-old organization. Um, it is more than an internship program per se. We um, focus on professional development. An internship program is integral to who we are. Um, our interns are from diverse, underrepresented communities, backgrounds um, in the health professions. So the next slide, please. So, um, and I would like to uh, introduce my colleague here from Healthcare Connection, um, Eileen Babajanian. She's the National Placement Manager. Um, and Eileen, if you wanted to say just a teeny bit more about HCC, that's great. Sure, thank you, Pat. Hi, everybody, good afternoon. Um, as Pat mentioned, uh, my name is Eileen Babajanian. I serve as the National Placement Manager and I work closely with our regional teams to ensure our recruitment and placement process. Um, in terms of a little bit more about HCC, we are in our 30, this upcoming summer will be our 31st summer, um, being able to connect um, recent graduates and um, undergraduate students with um, opportunities to intern in health related organizations and fields. We are, um, we offer talented, diverse under um, undergraduate students and recent graduates, really a comprehensive paid internship program our application um, will remain open for two months and I'll talk a little about it towards the end of our presentation, but our program offers interns um, really exposure and experiential learning, mentorship, um, exploration for those who, you know, are not certain what they want to go into and for those that are, as well as professional and leadership development and most importantly, I think peer support and networking opportunities. So we'll touch on a little bit of all of that as we continue, but I just wanted to say thank you for joining today and I'm hoping we'll be able to read many of your applications this year. No worries, thank you so much, Eileen. And before we dive in more into the components of the application and to talk about our experience, uh, we'll be doing a quick lighting round. 
So we'll go in order. Our first person um, is Eric Arauza. Eric, if you can um, introduce yourself, yeah. uh, what internship you did, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Okay. So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. It's a huge step that you're here with us today, and we're so happy that you're here. My name is Eric Arauza, and I did my HCC internship at Altamed in 2019, and that followed uh, me with a fellowship at Altamed, and I've been involved with the interviewer, uh, interviewing and um, reviewing applications. So we can pass it to Joanna. Perfect. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, my name is Joanna Gonzalez. Similar to Eric, I also interned at Altamed Health Services back in 2015. So I was part of their obesity prevention department. Now it's combined to health education. So it was part of a grant where I was really trying to find um, a model to a social needs model that can fit into a, a federally qualified health center. So because of um, HCC, that really opened the doors of where I was and what I was interested in public health. Um, so that's after Altamed, I actually ended up doing um, a full-time, yeah, I became a full-time employee at Health Leads. Um, it's a national nonprofit where we address social needs in different healthcare systems. So I worked there for three years and now I'm back at Altamed um, at our HIV department and prevention. So really looking into how we can improve processes, um, workflows, and to really just make it uh, patient-centered. Um, so I'll pass it over. Um, actually, a, a royal archaeologist, so someone who's not today, um, who's not with us today, is Mariana Magana. She's been really a great champion with Health Career Connection, um, and really built that partnership. So in the Coachella Valley. Um, after Mariela, we'll have Denise. Let's see, Denise Leon. Denise, are you online? Oh, I was wondering if she's on mute. There you go. Oh, sorry. I'm there you go. <laughs> My name is Denise Leon, and I am very grateful and very excited about this opportunity, HCC. Um, my name is Denise Leon, as I said. I am part of the Coachella Valley 2014 and 2016 host cohort. Um, my first internship with HCC was with the UCR Riverside, sorry, UC Riverside School of Medicine Future Physician Leaders Program. Um, that's where I got a lot of experience with going to health fairs and um, being able to translate for medical students and things like that. Um, my second internship with HCC was with Clinica de Salud del Pueblo and their Department of Civic Engagement. I assisted with the Flying Doctors event that they have every year in Thermal. Um, the city of Thermal is a Coachella Valley unincorporated city. It's a city where there aren't very many medical services in that area. So these doctors come from all around the world and they volunteer their time to provide these free medical services to people of this community. And um, with Clinica de Salud del Pueblo, I also got to assist in advocating um, for environmental health issues, such as issues on, at the Salton Sea. And um, in November of 2018 through May of 2019, I had a fellowship with HCC. I was the Southern California Health Fellow, and that's where I got the opportunity to read applications and interview potential HCC interns. And as I said, I'm very grateful for the to be able to give the opportunity to others that was given to me. And I'd like to pass it on now to Selena. Everybody, it's so nice to be here. Um, thank you for joining. My name is Selena Lopez, and I was actually a part of the HCC internship experience um, in the summer of 2017, which feels like so long ago with COVID happening, but really wasn't. And it was during my experience um, as an intern that I was connected with Kaiser Permanente. And I can truly say that without HCC and um, Pat and the program, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't um, be working at the company and I wouldn't have the role I have today, which is an um, associate consultant within um, KP's operational department. So um, I really want to just say um, you guys are doing the right thing by considering 
to apply for this program, um, especially if you're um, a rising senior or um, you've just graduated and are interested in finding an opportunity that could connect you with a full-time role. So um, I'll go ahead and pass it along to Jacqueline. Hi everyone and welcome to the HCC family. I want to say that and emphasize that because I really hope that all of you apply and uh, hope that you're able to go through the process and and join the network. So I uh, did my internship back in 2012 with Harbor UCLA Suburban Health Fellowship and that's when I got introduced to public health, which is my passion. Uh, I was on a pre-med track. I wanted to be a primary care doctor. And um, through that internship, I was introduced to uh, public health through uh, community-based participatory research. So I got to work with a team of wonderful doctors, medical residents, uh, medical students, undergrads, high school students, et cetera. Uh, and get to learn more about our, the community's needs and do some research around that. And, and I got to co-coordinate the program. So also did some great work in terms of building a mentorship program. And thanks to the network, after I finished my internship, because it was close to my graduation and undergrad, I went to UCLA, I uh, heard of a job opportunity with Kaiser. So just to give you a roadmap of how, uh, you know, this helped me and my career. I did the internship, got connected to a job, got a job um, right before I graduated and I worked with Kaiser in the Department of Population Care Management uh, and continued through the network to connect with HCC alum and um, also just those connected with HCC. And thanks to that, I, am, uh, I went off and did a lot of great things, worked for a nonprofit, the American Cancer Society, but are now currently working for the UCR School of Medicine. I have the pleasure of uh, helping to precept uh, some of the interns and, and uh, review applications and interviews. So again, happy to see you all here and I hope you join this family soon. And with that, I'll introduce Eloisa Lopez. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Hello everyone, I'm really excited to be here today and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Eloisa Lopez and I am also an HCC alumni. I completed my internship in 2018 um, with the School of Public Health at Loma Linda University. I was really interested in public health research so it was a great opportunity for me and I had the chance to do a community science project around the environmental health issues of the Salton Sea. So that was a very um, great experience for me to be able to work with local organizations and, and with the School of Public Health. Um, and that led to me, um, again, confirming my passion for public health research. And so the following summer, I did study abroad and I did a summer research program in Thailand. So that was very exciting for me. And then recently, um, I moved back to the Coachella Valley and I'm now working at One Future Coachella Valley, which is actually a partner of HCC. And through my work there, I've had the chance to do a fellowship and support students that are applying um, and doing the site placement and coordinating this past summer and helping students um, with any questions that they had around their internship. So it's been great to be able to give back as an alumni. And I'm excited that you are, are all considering to be part of this amazing program. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Makin Yassar. First off, can folks hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I usually have audio problems. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, my name is Rakeem Yassar, and I am a two-time alum of HCC. Um, in the summer of 2017, I was an intern with local nonprofit in Inglewood, the Social Justice Learning Institute. And most recently, this past year in 2019, I was an alum um, for uh, Kaiser Permanente Bernard J. Tyson School of Medicine. So it's a recently opened medical school through Kaiser Permanente's network, its own 501c3, and they just started with their first class of 50 students at the medical school. Um, and from, the, from my internship, I actually was able to get employed uh, full-time uh, by the School of Medicine. So I currently work there as a coordinator for their Office of Equity, Inclusion, and Diversity. Uh, I do a lot of work in regards to um, pathway engagement and development for the School of Medicine, as well as curriculum review. Uh, so it would be, um, uh, you know, it would be an understatement for me to say that ACC 
definitely had a big impact in terms of uh, where I am today um, and the opportunities that I've been able to enjoy early on in my career. Uh, I'm pre-med, uh, so the end goal for me is medical school, but through my experiences, I gained an understanding that in order to be a physician uh, for the people, I need to have a wide range of skill sets, and that's what HTC helped me afford in terms of my experiences. So I'm really glad to be here with y'all today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Makeen. And that concludes all of our panelists and speakers who will be leading this conversation. So next... Uh, um, Joanna, before we continue, could I mention something? Of course. Um, could you possibly reshare the PowerPoint because it currently shows the notes um, for everybody? So maybe just how we mentioned in the beginning. Perfect. Thank you so much for mentioning that, Eric. Of course. And she, as she comes up, there was the slide on um, the mission of Health Career Connection. And I think between Eileen and myself, we covered that one very well. The photo, though, does show one of our, um, we typically in the program uh, get the entire cohort for Southern California and Coachella Valley to get four professional uh, development workshops this year, this summer. They happen to be uh, remote by Zoom for all of them. And um, so just for everybody involved this summer, uh, program does entail um, uh, internships at individual match sites along with professional development. Um, and then um, Eileen, do you want Eileen to share her screen? Yes, that would be okay. great because I'm having some difficulties here on yeah. my end. Eileen, are you able to do that? I am. Let me get it queued up. Great. Um, and then I think the following um, slide. Um, Eric, do you want to see in the queue what the next slide was after the one of the professional developments? Because then we can keep rolling. Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, what we really wanted this webinar to be was to be something to help you, you know, make the application process as smooth as possible, because we know it can be a little scary and a little intimidating when there's like a big application and especially when your features on the line so we wanted to give you some tips and with that being said we just wanted to mention that when you're filling out this application it's important that you're intentional with the way that you fill it out because it really serves as a guide for the whole team to kind of find what type of internship you want to you want to have because the main idea is to kind of customize your internship experience because as you'll find out, everybody's HTC internship experience is not the same. Um, so for example, there's a section that asks for health related coursework on the application. Um, in my case, I wanted a community health fellowship. So for that section, I made sure that I, that I included like Chicanx, Latinx, uh, uh, studies classes, education classes, as well as like some STEM classes, but really trying to show that I want to do health education and community health. Um, and then there's also another section we wanted to mention that there's a professional and technical skills. It gives you the option to kind of highlight your top skills. And we would recommend that you put maybe the top five because this really also, again, is gonna help us serve as a guide to see what type of placement and organization you can work best with. Thank you. Thanks for doing that summary. Mm -hmm. um, and Eileen, I think this is your slide. Yes. Oh, perfect. I'm not muted. Um, so our application consists of multiple components that we look at as reviewers. Um, and in reading the last uh, five years, um, I will tell you off the bat that the statement of purpose is probably what we weigh the most heavily. Um, there will be uh, obviously a lot of questions and checklists um, regarding your educational background as well as demographic information. Um, definitely stuff. Uh, it, we question um, what your interests are, what your preferences are, both geographically as well as internship specific. Um, however, we do ask you to submit a resume as well as a statement of purpose. The statement of purpose really is our way in and it allows us to understand our applicants on um, really a deeper level than everything else on the application. So we, uh, 
I really take our time reading the statement of purpose. We want to be able to better understand how HCC is going to help you get to the next stage in your career. Um, and so I would encourage all of you guys to, um, you know, spend the most time, not too much time, but spend the most time on your statement of purpose, making sure you really demonstrate an interest um, in helping an interest and commitment and helping it to healthcare, excuse me, to healthcare and to public health careers. Um, and I think there's a few in a few slides, it's a little bit more in depth about the statement of purpose. So I'll stop there and then I'll add to it in a few slides here. But definitely um, take your time writing the statement of purpose, make sure it's thorough and it really um, portrays to the reader how HCC is going to benefit you in your pursuit of a health related career. Okay, and for the eligibility, um, we, so there are some just basic eligibility criteria, right? Um, you can be in a post back. you, um, if you're at a four-year college or university, we also do read applications, um, from uh, community college students. So, and, and we do place community college students. It is, uh, you know, I just can't understate, um, it is a rigorous process and it is a competitive process. So, um, but that being said, we have many organizations with many different um, outlooks on how they themselves are trying to develop the next generation of diverse health leaders, right? So, so absolutely do not count yourself out because it really is a match process. Um, but for the criteria, four year or two year college or university student or recent graduate. Um, and then if somebody else has notes um, for eligibility, please share. So um, no notes, however, we have been getting a lot of questions. So I think it would be best to address it now rather than waiting to the end in, in regards to eligibility. Um, not necessarily from this webinar, but in general, I've seen many of them come through our email. Um, there's a lot of question about whether recent graduate means um, those that have just graduated with their undergraduate degree, or does that also include recent graduates from a graduate program? Um, just to be clear and for the sake of transparency, our internships are only for undergraduate students and those that have recently graduated with an undergraduate degree. So recent graduates from a graduate program, unfortunately, are not eligible to apply. Um, however, those that have from um, a four-year university or a community college are eligible. Yeah. So let me try and... We typically have had, I see some of the questions about the actual year. I believe on the application this year, it does say 2019, right? As if you have graduated in 2019, you're eligible. I did just see somebody ask if they're graduated in 2018, um, if they are eligible. Uh, in the past, it, it has been a two year window. Um, it may have changed this year. Yes, in the past we have, um, our criteria has been recent graduates up to three years of their graduation. Um, and so, Pat, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is still the case this year? Okay, that, that's what I believe. I yeah, think no, it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the individual who asked about 2018, you are eligible. Yes. Um, Excellent. Um, so I'm gonna move ahead to the next um, slide here. Okay, and I know for the resume um, and the selection criteria, we had a few of our uh, panelists who were going to be speaking um, about their own, um, how they created their resume, the and as reviewers, I think Nakeem is going to talk about being a reviewer, um, and then another panelist is going to be, um, speak about the resume from the vantage point of um, an applicant themselves. Sure, so I, let's see, am I, okay. So I will start as a reviewer and then I'll um, pass it over to our panelists here. But like I mentioned a few slides ago, the most important thing is really a demonstrated interest and commitment to healthcare and public health, um, including but not limited to those um, fields that you see on the screen here. Um, I think most importantly for us is to be able to see 
um, how your vision and how your goals are aligned with the mission of HCC and addressing the health needs of underserved communities. Uh, we do take into consideration personal background, um, first generation students, um, you know, racial and ethnic identity, first to attend college, financial barriers, et cetera. So I do encourage you to include all, all of that information and tie it into your statement of purpose. Um, however, do not, you know, inundate inund 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 um, the reader, but definitely include how that has shaped you get to where you are today and how you see it continuing to shape the decisions you make, um, whether it be in academia or your professional career. Um, and then any other prior academic professional experiences that you've had. So we are gonna be looking at your resume. So we see all of the experiences listed there. So we don't necessarily want you to repeat that in the statement of purpose, but um, tell us what those experiences have meant to you and what the different skill sets are that you've gained as a result of those experiences. Um, so I will stop there and I'll um, ask our panelists to speak about their experiences, both as applicants and as reviewers. Great. And I think that they were Mateen and Denise and Eloisa. Well, definitely. So uh, as a reviewer, uh, both as an applicant and a reviewer, I can share my experience. That's okay. Um, so in terms of as an applicant, um, I definitely uh, utilize a lot of my uh, undergraduate uh, institution's resources in terms of helping you know, prepare what my resume looks like. Um, for other schools that you may go to, uh, typically, um, there exists uh, you like a career or professional development office in which you have individuals who either have students who do peer reviews uh, for professional reason or actual uh, staff members uh, who can help give you some insight in regards to uh, how you develop your resume. Uh, mostly it's in terms of like structure and layout. You want it to make sure that it has a, um, you know, a good layout in terms of um, when you look it can be chronological in terms of where you do your placements um, or your work experiences, uh, but also just making sure that, you know, it's aligned, indented in a way that's uh, readability is very important as a reviewer. Uh, we go through a lot of applications, and so uh, and making sure that there's uh, some, you know, strong consistency in terms of how you format it. Uh, you definitely want to get as many eyes on your resume as possible before you actually uh, send it in, because some of those jarring misplacements can, you know, Roll off a little bit um, In terms, of, um, I would say that you definitely wanted to have it formatted well. Um, don't be afraid to be a little creative with it. Uh, a lot of uh, my favorite resumes that I've looked at have definitely been those who, you know, included like splashes of color. Uh, not in terms of necessarily it looks like someone got a paintbrush and splashed on the resume, but you know, in terms of having their own personalized branding uh, in regards to color. Uh, you know, font, consistency, uh, et cetera. So yeah, don't be afraid to be creative with it either. Again, you want to get as many eyes on it as possible. So don't be afraid to not only ask whether or not um, you're reaching out to, uh, you know, your career professional development office or even professors and faculty because, you know, they're very well experienced in regards to developing resume. But I would say the standouts were ones that exuded some of your personality. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to, you know, try and get creative. Um, and in regards to uh, what you do and don't include, um, you can include your skills. Um, some people don't. You can include a summary of your purpose. Some people, um, but you know, make sure that it, it's a, a representation of who you are, your personality. Uh, that definitely helps in regards to making you stand out um, during the application process. Great, thank you, Denise. Um, something that we also wanted to mention is that on the application, we want to make sure that you list the address that you want to be interning at in the summer. So for example, if you attend UC Berkeley um, throughout the year, but you come back home to, let's say, Los Angeles, we would want you to put the, your Los Angeles address on your resume so that we know where to place you. Um, that's very important because we have different regions we have a NorCal region, a SoCal region, a Coachella Valley region. So that's something where we would have to divide all of our resumes um, into separate groups. And it's different people reading those resumes because we're in different regions. So I think it's very important to list that. Um, you also want to keep in mind that 
HTC does not provide a stipend for your rent and transportation. Whatever your stipend is, um, the total amount that you get, that's what you would have to use for your rent and transportation. You wouldn't get anything extra. Um, so it would be important for you to have your housing prepared and your, your, um, your own transportation. Um, Oh, something else that we wanted to mention. Um, it's also very important to give clear examples of um, your skills. Um, you want to list something that are related to the internship that you're looking for. For example, if you're interested in environmental health, it would be good to list some skills and some places that you've interned at before or maybe volunteered at before that relate to health and environmental health. Um, if you tried public policy before and that's something that you didn't like, um, you could also mention that, but try to specify the things that you are interested in, would like to do more on your resume. Great, thank you. And um, Eloisa, you've been a reviewer. Um, and an interviewer. So if you have some perspectives on the resume. Yeah. Um, in addition to format, as um, Nikki mentioned, um, and aligning it to your, your interest, the field of the internship or career goals, I think um, as a reviewer, a resume gives us a chance to learn a little bit more about you. So if there's something in that maybe you didn't mention in the statement of purpose because you focus on a specific experience, um, the resume is really your opportunity to highlight other, other experiences that align with your, um, with your career or internship goals. Um, so really take it as an opportunity to share as much as you can um, and tie it back again to your, your story. Um, I feel like a lot of times um, resumes will just be a list of responsibilities or duties that you had to, that you were in charge of at a specific um, role but instead focusing on highlighting um, your accomplishments um, and seeing it sort of as a form of storytelling where you highlight, for example, the group of people that you were serving, um, a specific project and what you, what that, the impact of that project. I think those are really important things to highlight in a resume. And they really allow me as a reviewer to get a, bit, a, bit, a better picture of who you are. Great. And one more thing we wanted to mention also was um, it would be uh, helpful for you to familiarize yourself with your own resume um, because this helps us show uh, authenticity because we really want the resume to speak for who you are and to really like show like what type of person you are and um, what you're passionate about. So we would say um, be authentic in your resume. You know, we sometimes like to add like super big words and like kind of seem like very fancy, but we really just want to know like who you are and like what you gain from these experiences uh, with your resume. Thank you. Uh, salient point and really um, to sum it up, uh, it is nice to show impact, you know, of, and, and how you have grown. Your resume should also sort of tell a story about how you have grown um, in some respect very important. Thank you. Um, Eileen, anything else? Um, no, I think we covered it. There are resources here listed. Um, if you are interested in looking at, into any of them, you can email um, either Joanna or I'll include my email in the chat box. Um, you guys can reach out to us uh, directly and I'll be more than happy to share that with you as well. Wonderful. Okay, um, next slide. So I think we kind of covered all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and skip. Actually, one point I do want to address. We do get a lot of questions every year whether or not letters of recommendation um, are needed. They are not needed, nor um, are they requested. We don't need to um, see them. We do ask, I think, for optional references. And should we need any additional information, we'll reach out to those references. But um, historically speaking, the information you provide on your application, your resume, your statement of purpose um, provides us enough info and background on you and your experiences where letters of recommendation are, have not been necessary. Sure. 
and just I do I think a couple of us had some one with the statement of purpose we are reading um, volumes of, of applications which is a joy it really is a joy to read all of them um, it is nice when there is a flow to a statement of purpose um, please also have somebody review it uh, believe it or not we do get both resumes and statement of purposes that um, have a fair number, we don't get a fair number of them, but the ones that do have a fair number of typos, uh, grammatical errors, and so forth. And so it's just as we're reading, um, it is really important for us to understand, because I also look at this, and a lot of us as reviewers and interviewers, as if you're presenting this at the next step, what would a host organization think? if you are going to be representing them or us or HPC and yourself. So just come at it with, you know, there are sort of multiple layers to the application and to the use of all components of the application. So we do not send off, if um, you're going into that secondary round, we do not send the statement of purpose to anybody else because people do, are, do really share their challenges, people share what they've overcome, um, people share their true dreams and goals, so we don't send that off, um, even when employers will um, request it. That just stays within um, our wheelhouse, but we do share the resume. So, um, any, and anybody else around the table who has reviewed, but just wants to put in a little word, uh, uh, if they have uh, reviewed or read or written a good statement of Oh, yeah, uh, and I'll try and be brief. Uh, I would just say in terms of the, the flow and what makes a strong written statement, I think that um, in terms of, you know, making sure that we, we really do get an insight in terms of like why you're passionate about this. Uh, I think what speaks, um, you know, to authenticity really is, you know, for all of us, um, you know, this is personal work um, in terms of wanting to get into the health profession and wanting to get into the health career. Um, to uh, use an example as a model, um, one of my friends who had also uh, worked with me, so yeah, um, she um, is a young woman who is pursuing, um, you know, going the pre-med route, uh, she's going to get her master's, but when she was an intern, one of the things that she had learned about was her interest in um, Black maternal health and Black infant health and mortality, because she, um, you know, from the moment of her birth, um, was born premature. And there were issues with us, black maternal health and foster family. And it was a realization that, you know, she wants to become a physician to help, you know, work on these issues. A lot of the reasons for you know, these issues were societal and that she wanted to be a part of HCP um, so that she could expand her skill set and have a better understanding of community health um, in regards to be able to tackle these issues. Um, and I thought it was personally very inspiring. Um, and so, you know, you definitely want to be able to give that insight and, you know, connect, find ways to connect your lived experience with your, you know, your passion in terms of what you're trying to do. Uh, and HCC, you know, explaining what you're looking to help um, gain from HCC so that HCC can expand on um, those Great. Thank you. This does speak to it. Oh, you don't. Um, and then our, our process. Um, do I leave? Sure. Um, so our process, so like uh, we have this on our last slide as well, but our application will remain open through December 13th. Um, we are going to have two informational webinars. Um, however, if you're participating here, you likely don't need to participate in another one. We're going to be sharing a lot of the same info. Um, but we, it, between now and the 13th, we will have two more informational ses sessions um, nationally for those who are interested in starting and or completing their application. But in essence, the process from, you know, at the point where you begin your application to when you submit, um, you're going to submit your application. Our reviewers um, will take likely the the month of December and maybe even the first few weeks of January to get through all of our applications. Um, if selected to move forward to our first round of interviews, you will be interviewing with HCC staff. Historically, those interviews have been in person. However, I think with COVID um, not subsiding anytime soon, those interviews will likely be virtual. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I am anticipating. 
Um, so if selected to move forward, you interview um, with an HCC staff. It's our opportunity to get to know you a little bit better beyond just the application and put a real a face to the um, to the application, put a and you know understand exactly what it is that you're hoping to gain from an internship. Um, if from that point you are still selected to move forward and continue with our process, at that point we use the feedback from your application as well as your first interview with HCC staff and we look at the available host organizations in the region of your choice and we match you with potential interviews with these host organizations. So looking at your interests and your geographic preference, we say, okay, I think Eric would be a good fit to go interview with um, Kaiser, with Altamed and with um, Glendale Adventus. Eric then attends his interviews. Um, he comes back and he gives us his feedback. The host organizations also give us their feedback um, and using um, the collective feedback from both that candidate as well as the host organization, HCC makes that final placement match. Um, we take into account um, the feedback of both parties as we think it's really important for it to be a meaningful experience for you for it to be something that you have found interest in and are looking forward to participating in, um, as well as making sure you're a good fit for that host organization. Um, in my example, I mentioned three host organizations. However, there's no guarantee that there will be three interviews lined up for you. It's really dependent on the opportunities for that summer, um, as well as those that um, are aligned with the interest that you have demonstrated to us through your application, as well as interview. Um, those uh, timeline wise, so that first round of interviews will likely happen in January, February. Um, I will preface that by saying it's different for every region. So those who want to be in Northern California might end up interviewing sooner and earlier in the year, whereas Southern California might end up interviewing a little bit later. So if you are speaking with your friends, with your colleagues, and you, um, you know, hear somebody who's already gone an interview, it's just because they're likely in a different region. We'll have interview weeks for all of our regions, but just to um, give you a high level overview on those, the timeline, the first round of interviews will be January, February, host organization interviews will be um, March, April, and then final placement matches are usually made in April, May. A lot of the month of May is spent onboarding. So depending on the organization you're matched with, you'll be asked to complete a series of onboarding protocols for them, as well as a few um, steps for HCC. And then many of our internships will begin in June. The start and end dates of all of, all of our internships will vary. It's pretty much dependent on the, the intern's academic calendar as it is the availability of the host organization. So um, we try to, we try to have a main date where everybody can start, but we do have variations and one-off situations where folks need to start a week sooner and end a week sooner or start a week later, end a week later. The most important component being the ability to complete the 10 consecutive weeks during the summer. So um, wide range as far as when that 10 weeks falls in, but it's essentially any time between May and September. And just one um, a, a couple of add-ons. To, uh, to that, thank you, Eileen. So the alumni that you see here, um, many have either have read applications um, and or been a part of our interviewing. So here in Southern California, we um, really emphasize um, super heavily um, the alumni engagement and alumni involvement in our entire process. So. We have a um, panel, it is um, staff and alumni who do the application lead and the, um, and the interviewing. And then we do a lot of um, uh, discussions in between. One quick thing, uh, we probably should take some questions, but just to give you an idea of how intentional also you should be about your choice, because somebody, I saw somebody in the chat ask them if we have sites in San Diego, uh, you have heard Southern California, but we place in San Diego, we place in great in Los Angeles County, including San Fernando Valley, um, Central Los Angeles, the Pasadena area, uh, Pomona and Inland Empire, uh, the San Bernardino, and also Coachella Valley. And um, we have a um, really robust uh, partnership with One Future Coachella Valley. Um, and 
maybe we'll get through a few questions and then we will go back to Eloisa and Denise. They are both um, from Coachella Valley. They interned there, they review there because uh, it is important to know a little bit about the area where you intend. The one thing is if, if you are intending to intern in Coachella Valley, you really need to be from Coachella Valley or intending to work there at the back. So, um, you know, they will have a few points about that after we answer some questions. Um, and then I'll loop back with um, the others about their particular area. Uh, because part of our application process too is our partners and we have a number of host organizations. So if you are at the part, I think it's on page seven of the application, where there's a very long drop down and it gives the different types of organizations that you yourself might be an alum of. You might be alum of bio biology scholars, Charles Drew, high school pathway. Do not overlook that. It's really important because we have very close relationships and that just shows all of you that there is an entire network throughout the country, but really throughout California and Southern California, that's working together to help individuals come along the pipeline to reach their career goals. So don't overlook that. If you have, you can click as many as you are and absolutely a part of. Make sure you are a part of them <laughs> because we also are talking to our colleagues, right? So, so that's really um, important to know. Um, should we take some questions? I think Eric has been, you know. Yeah, I was about to mention that I've been writing them down as they've been coming. So okay, cool. um, if we want, we can move over to the Q&A session. That'd be okay with you, Pat? I think we should. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we just want to respect everybody's time. If you um, walk, that's great. Well, yeah, of course. So we can start with Brian's question. His first, their first question was, uh, will this year's placements be 100% online? So in Southern California, um, this past summer, summer 2020, we um, had, uh, actually it was about 60% of our uh, total sites were in person and 40% were virtual. Um, and then about maybe 10% during the summer went from completely in person to a blend of you know a few days they'd be in and then a few uh, few days they would be remote so um there is a uh, there's a question about that are you able to do in person both or virtual um, okay thank you for that pat the next question is with regards to eligibility um shay alice shay elise uh, pardon me if i said the name wrong uh, they asked, are, if we are taking supplemental class at a community college, are we ineligible to apply? Pretty much. It is robust. Um, any, any of the panelists around would say just how challenging the internship itself is. There are professional development workshops. Um, there are site tours. There are obligations that go along with the internship, and the internship is full time. And if you see samples of the projects that the interns do, it is quite robust. You're learning a whole culture, vernacular, everything within an organization to deliver an output. And I think everybody around the table will say just how hard they work. Okay, thank you. The next question is from Roya. They asked, is it possible to learn about different programs within a different region? For example, they are from Sacramento and would like to know about different placements within that region? Um, ahead of time, I think the best way, even though it might be a little outdated, is the website. Um, I am the Vice President for Southern California, so I'm very familiar with our five counties here. Um, Eileen may be a little bit more familiar, but it is ahead of time in your application, and I kind of get where your question is going we're advising you to be a little bit familiar with the area and so your question is if i want to do something outside how do i get familiar right with the area? um but our sites change you know we have new partners every year the site changes um i think if you are asking about a placement outside of your hometown you should pretty much have a rationale 
I'm just going to say for Southern California, it's really hard to place people who just want to explore, right? I've never been to Coachella and I would love to spend the summer in Coachella Valley. That is not the intention of the host organizations in Coachella Valley. They're trying to develop the brain trust and skill sets of people from Coachella Valley so that they will work in Coachella Valley. So, um, uh, I don't know if you have anything to add. It's really tough. If you live here and you want to go to Boston, you have to get there, pay for the, you know, um, I've been with the program for six years and I just really have to be spot on honest for Southern California. If you're from Boston and you just want to come because you know summers are great, that's hard. Because somewhere in the matching, it comes out that it's just this exploratory thing and all the hosts are trying to develop a rapport and a relationship, even if people don't it, don't um, take a employ within their own office, which is fine, but there's a whole network. And so it's that kind of vantage point. Got it. Thank you so much for that, Pat. The next question is from Danielle. They ask, are applications considered on a rolling basis? Is it better to turn in sooner opposed to closer to the deadline? It is best to be polished. <laughs> if it is, we have all, you know, written grants, turned in uh, final reports, and if the deadline is, is midnight and you get it in and it's gorgeous, midnight is fine. It, it really is. It, it really is all about the match and you representing yourself. Yeah, and just to mention, um, to speak to that, I actually turned in my application at midnight before it was due. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Yeah. I did too because I thought maybe I wouldn't qualify and I just Same. at the last minute I was like you know what I'm just gonna try it and if it doesn't work out then it wasn't for me but I mean as long as it's good I think as long as you spend your time and, and submit it within the deadline you should be good. Yeah. And Denise your, your point about you didn't think it was good. Um, our president always says apply. Don't yes. you be the one to kick yourself out, right? So apply. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you so much. One, a uh, couple more questions from Isa. They asked, are internship placements limited to the region where you live in? I know, Pat, you mentioned on this, but for example, they're not from California. I'm assuming that they attend school here in California. So they're trying to ask if they don't live in California, can they still stay here during the summer? to do a placement. Sure, and that happens. If you attend uh, UCLA, or you attend USC, and you are from Texas, um, we do that type of placement, yes. You typically have housing, you have been here, though this year it might be a little different because you might be you know, remote, but um, we do place that. It is if you are from Florida and you want to be in Southern California or Northern California, that's challenging. You might have a better shot in Boston. If it's okay, thank you. The next question came from Brian. They asked, um, when you select a region, do you compete against those that selected that region as well? Yes. In the sense of interviewing? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, the answer is yes for that, Brian. And and then I see we got a new question from Casey. Cassie, also sorry if I said your name wrong. If you live in an area without a host, will you be placed in an area closest to you with the host? Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, uh, Eloisa or Denise? Uh, do you want to that one? Um, so when when you apply, you get to decide which uh, region you will you want to um, do your internship in. So, if there if you live in a region that doesn't have any internship sites, then that wouldn't necessarily be an option for you. You would choose um, if you want to be close to your hometown, then you would choose the region closest to you that we have sites in. Yes, and people okay. who travel. You know, people have been known to travel. We do try and make things work, but um, 
you know, for example, if you live in Fresno, that's pretty spread out region. Um, but they try and make the matches as best. I would say probably for Southern California, the furthest out is kind of, even though it's somewhat central, the Bakersfield interns do participate in our summer program. It's just a lot closer than Fresno. So, um, you know, there's that, that consideration. Let us know if we answered that correctly. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for your questions. We did want to apologize if we weren't able to get to them. Uh, we'll be, okay. I'll be messaging you directly the answer if we weren't able to get to your question, but we're going to switch over to Selena and Jacqueline. They're going to share their experience with uh, Health Career Connections and their internship and their progression in their, in their career. Great, and, and after that, um, then we will have a quick uh, piece with um, Coachella Valley and uh, Denise and Elisa. So thank you. Uh, Jacqueline? Uh, so we'll go with Selena. Everyone. Hi. Can you hear Selena? Oh, sorry. Hey. Echo. Can everyone hear an echo or is everything fine? That's better. Uh, I think you're better now, Selena. Okay, uh, that was weird. <laughs> Hi again, everyone. Um, so I guess I'll rewind and kind of share a little bit about how I found out about HCC and how I applied and eventually was accepted um, into my internship. So years back, um, uh, basically what happened was I was a senior <laughs> beginning to think about what I would do after college, which really hits you that year. And um, I found a flyer, fortunately, on campus that read, uh, you know, HCC summer internship program apply. And I didn't really know um, whether or not I would apply at the, at the time because I was still thinking about different routes to take after college. But eventually I submitted my application. Um, and I, after a couple months, um, was emailed or phone called um, to request an interview. Um, and it was after that long process that I was eventually matched with Kaiser Permanente. And um, it's funny because at the time I didn't know that um, I would be matched with a kind of like a business project. I expected the building to be something like a hospital or a medical center with physicians and nurses and LVNs and all that around me. But when I arrived, I was surprised to see that I was um, matched with the headquarters of Kaiser Permanente, which is in Southern, which is in Southern California in Pasadena. And um, it was then that I realized that there were so many different routes to take within healthcare that aren't necessarily clinical roles. Um, during undergrad, I thought I wanted to be a dentist, and it was through my HCC internship and through my um, match with the regional office of Kaiser Permanente that I realized I wanted to go into healthcare management instead. And so um, through my summer internship, I was able to work on projects that aligned with um, one of KP's um, biggest priorities at the time, which was flu. And um, I worked on a project and eventually was able to present to Medi-Cal executives as well as Kaiser Permanente executives. The program was very structured, um, thanks to HCC. And after my 10 week internship was over, I was able to extend my internship a bit longer to gain more experience within project management and healthcare administration. And eventually I was able to land a full-time job um, within Kaiser Permanente. Um, and I still work at KP um, and I'm still working from the regional headquarters. I've now gained you know, a lot of experience um, working within healthcare management and you know, just being able to you know, start my internship through HCC really started my career. Um, without the program, I wouldn't have the chance to, I wouldn't have a network, first of all, to land the job um, after college through a big company like KP. Um, and I wouldn't probably, um, you know, be in healthcare management, possibly <laughs> be a dentist by now, right? <laughs> or something else. But um, I'm really thankful for, you know, the opportunity and the doors that this program has opened for me personally. And I know that so many others have had similar stories where, you know, through their internship, they learned more about themselves and about what they want their career to look like. And so 
Um, that's kind of like my short story and I'm more than happy to go into greater detail um, with any of you if you decide to message me on LinkedIn or um, message me on this platform. So um, yeah, happy to take any questions here as well um, after Jacqueline speaks. Thank you, Selena, for sharing your story. And I think like Selena, a lot of us have similar stories. So I know I mentioned some of mine at the beginning. And just to recap, I just want to emphasize how much this program is going to connect you not only to your, I hope, um, your passions within healthcare and the different career sectors you can take, but also to the network that comes with it. So as I mentioned before, I did a summer urban health fellowship um, placement with Harvard UCLA where I was co-coordinating a program uh, for a, a network of basically pre-health or healthcare um, scholars, I like to call them, because they range from high school to undergrad, medical students, medical residents, and, and primary care physicians, and how they work within uh, the community. So that was my first uh, eye-opening experience to what public health even is and uh, on the ground specifically with working with community members and uh, like I said you know through that program I got to network with others there was a site visit I know site visits are mentioned here so site visits are things you you do get to do during the summer program to a Kaiser um, building when I did my internship so that's how I got introduced to Kaiser in terms of the, the workforce placement. Uh, and um, I gained an interest in population care management through my uh, placement and my experience as an intern through HCC. So when that job opportunity came, again, through a HCC job posting for Kaiser, I applied and um, I was actually told by my, my past boss that employed me at the time that what really drew her to my um, application was because I was a HCC intern and she actually got to continue to um, preset for other HCC interns as well. I got to be a proud of, of those um, application review processes and interviews as well. Uh, so just goes to show how that network continued. And then uh, I went to graduate school while I was working for Kaiser. I did my master's in public health. And I can't thank HCC enough for also just continuing to um, remind me to work on my future career growth because I would get reminders, like email reminders to attend workshops about graduate school education. Um, and I got to connect with other HCC alumni about graduate school and they helped me through that journey of applying. And then eventually I worked for the American Cancer Society and Population Health, working on state level initiatives. Um, and, and then uh, after that, I got connected um, in terms of my passions again with um, the UCR School of Medicine. And so I wanted to, because of where my life is now, I'm married and I want to start a family. I, I had to rethink what I wanted my work to look like and also um, continue to find purpose in my work within public health. So now I work for the UCR School of Medicine, mentoring others. I'm still kind of in line with what I was doing as an intern in HCC early on because I get to help a pipeline of future um, medical professionals. So uh, I just want to emphasize that this is a long-term network. And everyone is so connected. Even in my work now, I, I get to meet HCC alumni. So you will notice that in the panel, we had someone that interned with the UCR School of Medicine. So uh, I hope that you continue to learn more about this opportunity and that you apply. Don't underestimate yourself. This is an opportunity for you to grow and just find purpose in your future career development. And um, be a part of this family. So I hope you you really consider being a part of this family and always happy to, to help out and um, answer your questions as well. Uh, Pat, if you're speaking, you're muted. Thank you. I know that we are over time, so I, I really um, do want to give, though, a minute for Eloisa and a minute for um, Denise to speak.
speak about uh, the Coachella Valley and applicants there. It is very important, a very intentional region for us. Yes, um, thank you, Pat. And as I mentioned earlier, I currently work for One Future and we are a partner of ACC. So together we um, coordinate the internships here in the Coachella Valley region. Um, this past year, I had the opportunity to not only review and interview applicants, but um, work with the different preceptors and the site organizations here. So if any of you are from the Coachella Valley and are interested in, in an internship here, um, please feel free to reach out to me um, or anyone at One Future and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have specific to the Coachella Valley. Um, on the website, you'll find some of the organizations that we've placed interns at in the past. Um, and this, this past summer, a lot of them were able to move to virtual. So I'm very confident that next summer we'll be able to continue to host the same, the same amount or more um, interns as we did this past summer. But thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see Denise. Denise, is that anything new? Oh, yeah. We will... Okay. Um, so the way that I got involved with HPC, um, I guess it wasn't really my intention to go into the health field at first. Um, when I was at UCR, I attended an autopsy and I thought the work that was being done was really interesting. And so I looked up how to become a forensic pathologist and they're medical doctors. They go to medical school and become doctors. So I looked up how to get into medical school and I that's when I joined the Future Physician Leaders Program at UCR School of Medicine. Um, that was in 2013. We had a community-based project where um, we would go to different communities um, within the Coachella Valley and do internships and presentations. And um, there was someone in one of my in my group who I saw him go up to um, this sign-up sheet at one of the our lectures. And I asked him, what are you doing? Like, what, what is that form? Do I need to sign it too? And he was like, oh, this is for my HCC internship. And I'm like, do you have an internship? Like, I, I don't get paid to do what I'm doing. And I said, how do I get paid to do what I'm doing now? So um, the following year, I applied to HCC and I was placed at the SPL program that I was the previous year. And that's when I got to assist the program coordinator. Um, the year after that, I babysat full time for one of the physicians at UCR Health um, and then part time for another doctor. So I maintained that relationship with the people that I was interning with. Um, sorry, then I, I got to. Pointer, I think if we can wrap it up in about uh, a minute, just because um, just we're so far over. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention that the Coachella Valley is a very tight knit community. And when you join HCC, especially in the Coachella Valley, we are connected all the time. There's HCC alumni events, which is where I met Pat and was offered a fellowship. So I definitely recommend going to the HCC alumni mixers and um, just being involved with HCC because there's so many work opportunities and job opportunities um, that are available and we're all very, we all network with each other. We're all very helpful. Um, thank you so much. And that just two poignant points by all of the panelists. I wanna thank uh, my mentor. I wanna really thank uh, Johanna and Mariela Magana for organizing this. Um, Johanna, if you have any close out, and thank you again to um, all the panelists, alumni. It is an absolute joy, not only for me every time we have our alumni participate, um, but really it is family coming back and sharing the time with, um, with the alumni who, who continue to give so, so much to, um, to the next generation. I could not be, um, it's just a heartfelt moment to me to share this with, um, with all the alumni who have taken the time. Um, and uh, Johanna? Definitely. Thank you so much, Pat. And thank you, everybody, like all the amazing panelists, the HCC alums. And we hope that you gained a lot of perspective and insight. 
And just as a plug, uh, I'll be sending out the emails to those who complete the survey. So please fill out the survey. I'll go ahead and send out a reminder after the event. Um, but we hope that you enjoy this event and we hope the best for you in the application process. So feel free to reach out if any additional questions come up and have a great rest of your week.